If you're a fan of LEGO and Pokemon, you know the harsh truth. Out of LEGO's wide variety of licenses, Pokemon is not one of them. Someone with the construction toy license though is the Japanese company Kawada Toys, the owner of Nanoblocks. They've been making Pokemon sets since 2013, covering a wide variety of characters including Rayquaza, Snorlax, and Pikachu, or as my Amazon order says, Yank. Other Nanoblox Pokemon products include blind bags, large scale builds akin to the Ultimate Collector series in LEGO, and buildable playsets paired with non-building figures. To get a slight taste of LEGO Pokemon, we'll be trying to replicate a Nanoblox Pokemon into a LEGO Pokemon, and see how neatly these competitors' designs evolve into one another. But before we get into it, make sure to catch that like button. Hey, nice throw. Now let's get building. For this challenge, the nano block we'll be building, if you couldn't tell already, is Pikachu. Pikachu's my favorite Pokemon, he dominates my shelves, I use him in all the games, and he's just so iconic, so we had to go with him for this video. On the front packing here, we see that Pikachu is number one, yeah he is, in this line of sets. This Pikachu has 130 pieces and a level 2 building difficulty. For reference, pretty much the more larger or complex the build is, the higher the difficulty level is. The back just has some Japanese I can't read, as well as some nano blocks lore for ya. Busting this nano block open, these bricks are tiny, like a lot smaller than I expected. I guess I'm just more used to Lego, but if we compare the two, the size difference is wild. Reminds me of a you versus the guy they told you not to worry about meme. Both bricks also interlock differently. The nano bricks lock together through this fin in the middle, where Lego bricks rely on that stud and tube interlocking system. The nano instructions also aren't the clearest thing in the world either where instead of Lego step by step, one brick at a time, Nano throws a large spread of bricks at you at once. And putting this together requires a lot of patience and concentration. It's really easy to lose your spot on the page. The beginning is definitely the hardest since you are pretty much just setting up the groundwork. This is step one done. This took me about 20 minutes to do. This might take a while. Picking these up with my man hands isn't really the easiest either, which is when I found out that Nanoblox actually sells tweezers to help out with this. I probably should have ordered one of those. To improvise, let's borrow my sister's tweezers, which actually work pretty well for the most part. Just keep it between us that I use them. For my first time building a nano set, it was definitely harder than a Lego set. This lines up with a quote from Nano's US website saying, Nanoblox is a superior building experience with greater challenge, sophistication, and detail than any other construction set. I don't know if something is superior just because it's harder, but it's definitely an interesting change of pace since I've only mainly dealt with Lego bricks. If you're a Lego or construction toy fan looking for a challenge, especially on more of a budget with these Pokemon bags, you may want to look into trying Nanoblocks out. So after more building, we finally finished this guy. For size reference, here's a Lego figure, a Funko Pop, a banana for scale, and the milk your dad said he was going to come home with. Now with our Nano all built up, let's go build Lego Pikachu. Because the designs of the bricks are so similar, it's really easy to find a LEGO compatible part between the two. I simply matched the designs, ordered the parts on BrickLink, and here we are. Following the instructions again was not fun, but it definitely went quicker because the big ol' LEGO pieces are a lot easier for my meat hooks to work with. Without further ado, here is... Nanoblox Lego Pikachu. Maybe it's just because my Lego version uses the basic bricks, but for some reason, the Lego one just looks a little bit more childish than the Nanoblox one. It reminds me of something I'd build as a kid with those buckets that just had bricks in them. I guess this lines up with Nano's marketing copy since the Japanese website talks a lot about adults enjoying the hobby. My guess is that these target those that think Lego might be a little too childish, but still want to get that model building fix. They also just take up less room than your average Lego set, which could be appealing. Side by side, it's funny how one looks a lot bigger than the other one. But as for our question of whether we could turn a Nanoblox design into Lego, the answer is yes. Hypothetically, you could probably replicate this process with any of the smaller Nanoblock Pokemon, as long as Nanoblocks don't have any odd specialty pieces we don't know about. 
overall, this was an interesting experience going from the Lego I've always known to unknown territory with another construction toy like Nanoblocks. I had some difficulty, but now that I think, it's not unlike how first time Lego builders could have trouble with a Lego set. Well, I don't think I'd ever switch over from Lego to Nano, because Lego's just built into my DNA at this point. I'm not gonna rule Nano out, since they do have some cool stuff coming out like these deluxe Dialga and Palkia models. Anyway, thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Nano Blocks compared to Lego. Maybe also drop in the comments too any other Nano Pokemon you'd like to see replicated in Lego form. Until next time, happy building!